pressure area is moving north, Brad. Thanks, Skipper. In about six months, I won't have to worry about schedules anymore. Are you still talking about that crazy idea of yours? <laughs> What's crazy about flying to Manila? In the kind of plane you can get? In an ironing board with an electric fan on the front. I'm going places, my boy. You've got a long way to go yet, then. Well, Lindbergh started just where I did. Yeah, I know. There you are. Now can I see the hangers? Tommy, if you don't mind temper, me, I'm going temper, to... Temper, temper, temper. Remember, the first rule of the air is to check the emotions. Yeah, make it the same as usual. Tommy, this is Pod Bradshaw. He'll tell you nobody's allowed in the hangars. Brad, this is my brother. Oh, so you're Pilot Bradshaw. Well, I know all about you. How <laughs> my public grows. Oh, she doesn't. She's always talk about you. Oh, Tommy. Well, you do. I guess you're a pretty good pilot, though. Lady, that's a smart young brother you've got there. Now, go straight home. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. How about some coffee? Please. Make this two, will you, please? Well, look, I got a line on a new backer today. No, who? I'll tell you about it after I've talked to him. I also got some new dope, too. You see how this wind comes down here west of Molokai? Mm hmm Well, I think we ought to cut south and then head for Manila. Oh, you mean we'd fly west and we reach longitude 160? Flight 7, westbound to Los Angeles. Ooh, Your hurry. plane yeah. will be ready in 10 minutes at gate 2. Come on, slave. Be right with you. You think that over and see if you don't think this is a better plan, will you? Oh, come on, come on. Okay, okay. I don't mind telling you that this fast life is really ruining my digestion. I'll be with you in a good minute. Final passenger list, Spud. Give me the city desk. This is Spud Johnson speaking. Thanks, Jones. How goes it with Brad? Outside of flying, I don't think he knows I exist. He will, baby. He will. Gotta look that list over carefully. Dave Miller's flying across with us. Holy case smoke. You mean the movie producer? That's right. Oh, sour puss. How's tricks? How's tricks? You've got a plane leaving in five minutes. Why didn't you let me know that big shot was on it? Who's on it? Miller. Dave Miller, the big movie producer who... Say, you're supposed to be a press agent. You're supposed to be telling me. Now, listen, Eddie, you're getting yourself all excited over nothing. I saved you the trouble of sending a man down. I interviewed him myself, and I have his typed statement right here in front of me. He said, uh... Well, well, come on, come on. And he was very definite about it, too. He said, uh... Here it is. Quote, this tobacco, uh, uh, the picture of the future is a blend of several basic products, since we do not believe any one single source has all the necessary qualities for full richness. That's fine, Spud. We can give that thing a big spread. But I thought that I was a pal of yours. Why didn't you give me exclusive on that story of your own? What story? Your wife's just gotten a warrant for your arrest for non-payment of back alimony. I understand the sheriff's on his way to see you now. Oh, he is, is he? Well, not if I see him first. my boy, and see if there's any change in the weather ahead. Anything you say, Massa? Anything you say. Fly 7 to Los Angeles, calling El Paso. Hello there. Well, fancy meeting you here. How are you, Mr. Parker? Bill, do you, I hope. Coffee, Mr. Bill? Oh, yes, thanks. And I'll also take guess one answer on a date with you tomorrow night. Hope this is our committee. Except to... social invitations and the passengers. I know, you've told me before, rule 23. <laughs> Just how many times does a passenger have to ask before a hostess breaks that rule? Seems to me I've asked on five trips so far. Thanks, but I can't really. Well, what do you do with your leisure? I fly. What? Uh, myself, I mean. Oh? I have 200 hours solo already. Splendid. What's the matter? 
Another radio message from Miller. Say, that guy must be some pumpkins. Well, he's to the movies when I am to aviation. You get it? Yeah. Uh, I know it's a tough assignment to give a director, Harry, but I think you'll be able to handle her. She was so easy to handle when she first started. What a difference now. Still, Diana Audrey and our air picture will mean plenty at the box office. The worst of it is, she knows it. That's what makes her think she has the right to be temperamental. Well, you'll never get her to make this picture with Lane. Why not? Just because he's new? The only way I can build up a name for him is by teaming him with a star. You're right. And we can use some fresh faces. Did you gentlemen ring? Sure did, lady. Another radio message from Mr. Miller. How goes it, Brad? Oh, I can't complain, because I really can't. <laughs> you know, that's what our southern gentleman call a nice kid. Oh, so you noticed that too, did you? Yeah. Radiogram for you, Mr. Miller. Oh, thank you. Now she's even howling about her costume. Says they conflict with her personality. I don't know what else an air hostess can wear other than an air hostess uniform. I can't see why she objects to that costume. It looks all right to me. What do you mean? The hostess. Uh -oh. His first trip? Yes, he's teething, too. I don't see anything wrong with it, do you? <laughs> he seems to be enjoying it. Oh, he never cries, <laughs> except when my husband's asleep. <laughs> God bless him. So wait a minute. The girl's got a nice quality, Harry. Eh? The hostess? She's got sparkle. Verb. I like her. The oh, hostess. Tell me, how long have you been flying? Why, about two years. You ever done anything else? Nursing? We have to be graduate nurses. Yes, I know. You ever tried any acting? Oh, I know. Well, I don't think you'd make any mistake in trying. Oh, I wouldn't be any good at that. I have an idea that you have possibilities. And what's more, my company will be willing to pay to find out. You mean? You come into the studio tomorrow and we'll talk about it. You are David Miller, aren't you? Yes. I'll tell you what I have in mind for you. We're starting an air picture very soon, and I have a notion that you'll fit very well into the second league. But, but what about the... You mean the job? Yes. Oh, I think we can arrange a contract that will take care of that satisfactorily. We could start you at, say, 200 a week. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's quite all right. Sure, this is okay. Safe and sound and all the thrills of being a floor worker. But I'm not going to stick to chauffeuring these flying rubbernecks all my life. No, sir. Brad, you're as crazy as a hoot owl. Sure, but I have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, you take all the time you want. When you've made up your mind, you come to the studio to see me. Here's my card. Oh, thanks, Mr. Miller. Oh, no. If you scream as well as I think you're going to, I'll be thanking you. Oh, and uh, here's your sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you never can tell where you're going to find the stars of tomorrow. Bring up teaching. Tell them how we're doing, will you, pal? Flight 7 to Los Angeles. Ten miles east of Big Springs. Ceiling unlimited. Visibility unlimited. Not a cow on the street. King of the Airways nonchalantly reports another successful battle with storms and bad schedules. How's the town been behaving? It was all right till you blew in. <laughs> What's the matter? Aren't you happy? Delirious with joy. Here's your pay envelope. Thanks, Woody. Sign here. I'm leaving my box by mistake, Brad. They're all from women and they're all the same. Mr. Bradshaw, would you please call? Please. <laughs> How do you do it, Brad? You feed him caviar? Can I help it if I've got everything? Yeah, someday you're gonna get hooked, too. No, sir. Marriages are made in heaven, so I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah. Ann, Sissy, Dora, Kitty. And I can't even get a postcard from my own sister. Boy, I wish I had his system. Hey, 
Hey, Tex, you seen Joan anywhere? Sure, there she blows off your port bow. Hey, Joan! I'm looking for a candidate, and you're it. Candidate? Yes, you see, I just got some great news, and I need somebody to celebrate with. And who do I run into but the one girl for the assignment? Oh, Fred, I'm awfully glad. What is it? Tell you tonight, kittens. I've got some news, too. See, it just goes to show you how lucky you are. I might have bumped into somebody else instead of you. Ooh. I've got big news to celebrate tonight, and you wanted to order beef. Well, champagne's expensive. That's a word we're going to forget. Cigarettes, sir? Okay. Here you are, kittens. Thanks. Here you are, Mom. Keep the change. What have you done? Inherited a fortune? That's the uh, general idea. Be serious about it for a minute, Brad. Pardon me. Uh, you order champagne, sir? Yes, I certainly do. Wonderful stuff, this champagne. What is the big news, Brad? Tell me. Honey, child, I really got something to celebrate. Hope everything will be all right, sir. Thank you. Now, what is the big news? Tell me. All right, all right. Be patient. I've got to build up to it gradual, like. Well, then I'll tell you something first. I've just been offered a movie contract. No. A part in Audrey's new picture and a contract. How much they offer you? Two hundred a week. Only two hundred, huh? Last night I was so excited I didn't dare to think. But let's not talk about me. Here's to your big news. Now tell me, what is it? Oh, oh it's nothing much. It really doesn't amount to anything. Come on, let's dance. Miss me? Oh, well, you know how it is. Out of sight, out of mind. Kittens, I wouldn't try to tell you what to do, but uh, gosh, I wouldn't take a job on the ground for anything. Of course, with a girl, it's different, but gee, I wouldn't take all the movies made in Hollywood for an old jetty with a sewing machine to run the propeller. <laughs> Okay, Dave, I'll take it up with you in a moment. Hello. Oh, hello, Miss Lawson. How are you? I've made up my mind, Mr. Miller. You have? Good. Well, <clears throat> then come out sometime tomorrow. We'll talk about making a test. No, I've my mind to stick to flying. Well, I, I must say that I'm surprised. <laughs> I know I must sound silly to you. But you must like flying an awful lot to be willing to pass up an opportunity like this. Yes. I do. Oh, come in, Diana. I'm sorry, too, Miss Lawson, but I still think you're making a mistake. Goodbye. Hello, David. Hello, Diana. Come in. Sit down. Thank you. Cigarette? How are things on the Malibu? Foggy, I guess. I'm glad you came in. I wonder if you are, David. Well, yes, of course I am. I wanted to talk with you about Sky Fever. You like the story? Oh, I like the story very much. Good, then we'll start shooting right away. No, we won't. Now, look here, Diana. I thought when I got back, I'd find you'd gotten over your tantrum. It's not a tantrum. It's a decision. Hello? Oh, it's for you. Hello? Oh, yes, Donald. Hello, Diana. I thought it would do you anything tonight. Well, maybe we could... I'm sorry, I'll be busy. Yes, and I'll be busy then, too. Uh, well, that's what I thought. Goodbye. I brought you along this far. Why don't you trust my judgment now? I won't let Lane play opposite me, and that's final, David. But why not? Just because he's new? 
Why, I think it'll be the finest thing no, in the world. No, he's a washout. He has any more personality than a post office pen. And he can't act. You let me be the best judge of that. I won't do a picture with him, and that's final. Diana, I hate to say this, but I've got to remind you that there's a little slip of paper that you signed. Remember? You mean the contract? Yes, the contract, which provides that we have the final decision in casting of pictures. It also provides that I can disapprove of stories. Yes, but you've already said you like Sky Fever. Ah, but not in writing, David. Disapprove, Lane, or I will not approve the story. Oh, yes, you will. You forget that Stanton is the president of this company, and that my original deal was with him. I am in charge of production. I give the orders here. Stanton promised me personally I would not have to play opposite Lane. Unfortunately, he's in New York. He can't be reached by phone. I know, because I've tried. Then you'll have to wait until I get back. I'm leaving for New York. Madam, it's impossible. All planes are grounded by fog and storm. Of course, I believe you could, but it wouldn't make any difference if you paid $1,000. Lady, if you were the Queen of Sheba, we could not fly you out of here tonight. Hello, Rosie. Hello. Oh, what are you doing on the coast for? Uh, the little woman's got alimony fever again. Oh, women, women, women. Oh, go right ahead, madam. I'm listening. Go right ahead. Yes, yes. Irate dame demands service, eh? Just because her name's Diana Audrey, she thinks... Diana Audrey? Out of my way. Hello, Miss Audrey. This is Mr. Johnson speaking. Yes, I'm the vice president of this line. Yes. Yes, clerks are clerks, Miss Audrey. <laughs> now tell me what I can do for you. You crazy nut. Yes. Oh, certainly, of course. I'll attend to it myself. We'll have a plane ready for you in an hour. Oh, no, no. It's a pleasure. You double barrel blithering idiotic fool. Spud, what are you doing out here? Oh, hello, Brad. I came out here on a matter of business, and it looks as if... Oh, hey, Tootsie, uh, will you get me the home office on long distance? I want to speak to the general manager. We're organizing a little party tonight, Spud, and you're wrong. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hold it, my pal. I think I might have a little job of flying for you to do. Oh, no. We've got places to go and things to see. Shh, shh, shh. Hello, Mr. Gray. This is Spud Johnson. This is Tops. Diana Audrey, the biggest name in pictures, will be here in an hour. And that new speed cabin job is here. We can't send a plane up in the weather you have out there. But it's news if a movie star races across the country and sets a new record and happens to do it in one of our planes. I wouldn't approve it if you argued a thousand years, and that's fine. How long have we been flying? 35 minutes. Look, if you want to sit up here instead of back there where you belong, keep your hands off the wheel, please. Oh, sorry. You're a good pilot, aren't you? Put it conservatively, I am. I hope you are, because it seems terribly rough tonight. Yep, it is. Get your hands off me. Oh, I'm sorry. What time is it, pilot? 9.20. I hate to keep on calling you pilot all the time. It's really informal. I, uh, notice your initial is M. Yeah, it is. M for Nebuchadnezzar. It's a foreign name. It's an odd name. Yeah, it's Arabian for Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> so you really are a human being, aren't you? And a very superior one, madam. I didn't mean to be a smart aleck back there, but that was a pretty rough stretch of weather, and I'm a fellow that just can't fly and talk at the same time. I'm sorry. You know, I've seen a lot of your pictures. And did you like them? Yes, I did. Something I always wondered about, though, in those uh, final scenes. What was that? Well, I was wondering if kissing you was half as exciting as it looked. I, uh, wouldn't be able to answer that. I... <laughs> oh, no, you wouldn't, would you? You, uh, mind if I find out? Uh, I'm afraid I do. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that motor. Is there anything wrong? No, 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 everything's all right. I hope. Kansas City to Bradshaw. Kansas City to Bradshaw. Kansas City to Bradshaw. 
Come on, give me the press room. Due to the extraordinary countrywide interest in the disappearance of Diana Audrey and her pilot, Neil Bradshaw, we interrupt this national broadcast to bring you the latest bulletin on the search for them. Radio. Did you get more from Bradshaw? No word from Bradshaw yet. That little bit spot not to send the plane out. Kansas City to Bradshaw. Kansas City to Bradshaw. Anything yet on Diana Audrey? Keep checking all the Air Force and all the radio stations. Hello. This is Joan Lawson speaking. Have you heard anything on Neil Bradshaw yet? Nothing at all? I was told that a lame-brained half-wit named Johnson is there. What is on the phone? Sound like bad news? Well, it can't you call exactly complimentary. I left for China an hour ago. Mr. Johnson isn't here. Highway with two. This is Styles Mayberry of Orchard Corner. I thought I'd call you fellas up. The road's washing out a little above the bluff. Behind my berry path. Yeah. When you go up there, you might take a look beyond Pine Hill. My wife says she's seen an airplane or something uh, coming down. But you better look at the roads first. Hold on, Flamenco, we just got a flash. Get out everything you've got on Audrey. Okay, boss. Hello, you guys. I don't care if you have to go by dog sled. Get up there. All these names sell newspapers. The road's out. Shot on a plane. I'll get going. Well, boys, if she's safe, she's got a million dollars worth of publicity, and she's doubled her audience interest with an air story for her next picture. Boss, that's the kind of publicity press agents dream about. And he reported that he sighted the plane resting in the clearing. Press, camera, and newsreel men are already on their way to this remote mountainside. Here. Well, they better be. They ain't gonna lug this thing down the hill again. Hey, Mr. Bradshaw! Come on in! Hey, right oh, 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 hey, Bradshaw. Hiya, Bradshaw. We sure had a hard time finding you. Do you mind coming out and giving the newsreel and the reporters a little break? Not a bit. Be right there. All right. All right, boys, get your cameras right, right out. Glad to see you, boys. This is your talking reporter interviewing Andre and pilot Bradshaw. Hello, folks. There really isn't very much to tell. We were forced down the side of that ridge and uh, blew out both tires and weren't able to take off again. And, well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> tell us. Were you scared? Oh, not in the least, were we? Well, I'll have to admit I was a little scared, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, how'd you happen to find this shack in the storm? Well, we were just lucky and stumbled onto the trail, that's yeah. all. <laughs> oh, what Pilot Bradshaw failed to mention was his heroism. Now, we were on the other side of the ridge. Hey, hey, forget it. Oh, my Brad. Folks, this is really a big fuss over nothing. The motor caught and we pancaked and then hiked to the cabin and uh, I, uh, then, well, I, uh, come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Audrey. Oh, 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 I know you have no way to get back. Look out, boys, here he comes, all together now. Hail, conquering hero, come. Oh, Brandy. Our hero. Did great big hero rescue beautiful movie actress? Just let me touch you. That's very funny. I don't think. What's the matter, Braddy? Can our little hero take it? <laughs> this scene is typical of the South Seas. The islands of music and romance. Peace and happiness. We'll be flying right over that spot someday, kiddens. Yes, together. Shh, can't hear the music. One of the most interesting air adventures of recent times was the safe landing made by pilot Bradshaw, while Diana Audrey was his only passenger. Well, hello, folks. There really isn't very much to tell. We forced down on the other side of that ridge and uh, blew out both tires and weren't able to take off again. And, well, here we are. <laughs> well, tell me, how'd you happen to find this shack in the storm? Well, we were just lucky and stumbled onto the trail, that's all. <laughs> oh, what Pilot Bradshaw failed to mention is his heroism. Now, we were on the other side of the ridge. Hey, hey, forget it. Oh, why, Brad? Folks, this is really a big fuss over nothing. The motor caught and we pancaked and then hiked to the cabin and uh, I uh, then, well, I, uh, come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> come on, let's go. All right. Hey, we ain't seen Mickey Mouse yet. Be quiet, Tommy. Oh, my life ain't my own. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
You have all the earmarks of a flop in the making, if you ask me. I've never had a failure. There's always a first time. I don't have to listen to this sort of talk. Stop arguing, you two. That'll never get us anywhere. We're here to decide on what to do. Simply laying out of the picture. Yes, and get who? I'll tell you who to get. Who? Neil Bradshaw. Neil what? Bradshaw. The airplane pilot? No, the actor. So I never heard of him. What do you mean? I mean simply this. Bradshaw the pilot has ten times the personality of Lane, and he made twice the actor. Don't oh, come down to earth, Diana. This is serious. But I am serious. You realize the publicity value of using his name with mine in the picture now? Well, it's like telling me to pick a man off the street. It's silly. It's the most sensible thing that's been said here yet. But it'll take weeks. Where's the time for tests? We have tests already. What tests? Where? We have miles of newsreel shots of him. Couldn't want better tests. And I think he'd fit the part beautifully. Let's go to an orphanage, adopt an actor, and raise him. Wait a minute, Harry. If the man has got something, it would be the slickest showmanship stunt in years to team him. Mr. Miller, get me all the clips on the Audrey newsreel air stuff right away. Yeah, projection room five, and hurry. I'm coming, Harry? No, I think I'll sit this one out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Personal call for you. Me? Yeah, I'll take over. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Hello? Bradshaw? This is David Miller, the producer at Empire Studios. Oh, yeah? Well, this is Shirley Temple the Eighth. <laughs> now, listen, you wise guys, a gag's a gag, but I'm getting tired of it. So go buy yourself some rompers and play in somebody else's backyard, will you? Hello? Hello? Boys well, it play, huh? Yeah, they still think it's funny to use that bratty stuff. I guess I'll have to send a wire to Neil Bradshaw. Kid, see if there's another photo of that new plane in there. Aye, aye, sir. Hold it, Eddie. I'm looking. Uh-uh. The other drawer. That is the shellacking file. Yeah, it's in there, I think. Yeah. Yes, Eddie, I got it. I'm sending it over with the boy, Eddie. Oh, yeah, that's swell, Eddie. Oh, sure. OK, Eddie. Goodbye, Eddie. That was Bill. The shellacking file, eh? Bud, give me the key to that drawer. All right, here's the key. I haven't touched a drop of that giggle water in years. That's exclusively for the visiting fireman. Listen, kid, I've got a stunt cooked up with Eddie to land a helicopter on the governor's lawn. And you're looking for a candidate. How about it? Oh, no. Brad will be here in a second. We have three days off and we want to use every minute to... I know, the Manila flight. Hiya, Brad. Howdy, hi. Hello. Kittens, Spud, take a look at this. Is that something or not? This is really the top swell you see it. Oh, Brad, did you get a new backer for the Manila flight? <laughs> oh, it's bigger than that, right or not, Spud? It's big, all right. Well, Brad, what is it? Don't stand there like a sphinx when I'm dying of curiosity. Lady, you're looking at real wealth. I've just okayed a movie contract. Movie contract? Yeah, $500 a week. What do you think of it? Why, well, I think it's grand, Brad. It'd take me 10 years to earn that kind of dough here, if ever. Yes, sir, Lady Luck's perching right on my shoulder. <laughs> she certainly is. Colossalistic, that's what it is. Just goes to show you never know what's coming your way, do you? <laughs> hey, Brad, there's a reporter from the Times to see you. All right, Mac, I'll be right with you. There you are, my public. See you later. Uh. I'm sorry, kid. For what? It's my fault. If I hadn't started that dizzy publicity stunt with Diana Audrey, it'd never have happened. Forget it. Means a lot to you, that goof, doesn't he? I don't know why. Yeah, but I know. <laughs> what a bright little genius I am. Spud. Yeah? Unlock the photos. Unlock them? I think I can stand one myself. Huh? Oh. Oh, sure. Spud. If that helicopter stunt is still open, I'll take it.
You can go now, Edwards. I won't be needing you anymore today. Yes, Hello, Diana. Oh. Hello, Donald. Have peanuts? No, thank you. I've been waiting an hour for you. I thought maybe if uh, you weren't doing anything tonight that we could go... I'm sorry, I'm busy. Oh, sure. Well, how about maybe we could go out... Goodbye, Donald. Goodbye, Diana. Oh. Well, Diana, what do you think of it? <laughs> it's simply gorgeous. Just a little bag of tail I picked up. Where do you see the Sunday job, though? You're really putting it on. Why not? Studio tore up the old contract, wrote a new one and a bigger figure. Oh, that's grand. I'm glad, Brad. <laughs> Very much afraid I'm going to be a success, thanks to you. Oh, forget it. Want to go for a ride? I'd love it. Come on. Oh. Tommy, what are you doing here? Didn't I tell you to stay out of the hangars? Shh. He's in there. Who? It's Spud. He's bathing somebody. Bathing somebody? What do you mean? Well, that's what he told me anyway. He said he was ducking alimony and not to let anybody come in. <laughs> Tommy, you go home. Oh, gee whiz, sis. Enter, madame. Well. Nice little spot you have here, Spud. Have to take a long leave? The sheriff is staging a sit-down strike in my office, so I moved in here. Say, that helicopter gag was dynamite. Get a load of those clippings, will you? While I attend to my cooking, I have things on stove. Imagine all this attention for that silly little flight I... If I do say so myself, that's the best play any yarn has gotten locally in months. Yes, it's funny, isn't it? Funny? What do you mean, funny? Well, that... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Joan. I didn't mean for you to see that. It's all right. Still thinking about him, eh? Mm-hmm. I suppose I'm a fool, Spud, but I just can't help it. Well, I'm not the man to criticize anybody for the lack of willpower. But I wouldn't take this thing backing down. What do you mean? Dough and glory. Open your soup and stop talking riddles. Now listen, you've got places to go. And we're going to show some people we know a trick or two. Why, with your looks and my brains and the way you can fly, in six months, I'll make you... I wonder who that is. Oh, it must be Tom. I'll let him in. Come in, Squirt. This is the chance I've been waiting for. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, oh, uh, oh uh, hello, hello, Mr. Gray. I trust I'm not intruding. Of course, I'm only the man who signs your paychecks. But I wonder if you would mind telling me what you're doing here. I, 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 I was just testing the livableness of our plane, you know, to, to make sure that the stove would work and to see if the seats were comfortable and everything. And, uh, well, everything is fine. You know the company rules, Miss Lawson. What are you doing here? Why, well, I, I... It's all right. She was just helping me out. Turn in your uniform. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. You fire her, and that goes for me, too. That's fine. I was just going to get to you in a moment. You can both pick up your checks at the cashier's office. But you shouldn't have done that. No. But it's a great break. Now I can spend all my time building you up. Never did like that guy anyway. No imagination. <laughs> I was just about to tell you before Squirt came in that when you make that flight to test the, uh, the new speed motor... What flight? Evening papers will tell you all about it, baby. Here, let me do that. Give me a little room. Consomme. That plane is down in Wyoming? Not yet. Keep after it. Joe, baby, listen. Rocky Mountain Airlines has a plane down somewhere in Wyoming. I just got the word from Eddie here. Now listen, get in a plane and fly that route and try to find it. I'll have stories on the wires in half an hour. Okay, kid. Good luck. Give us a good break on this, will you? Just found the Rocky Mountain plane in Isolated Valley. It appears undamaged. We'll try to land and give first aid. Stand by for further information. 
station. I'm tired of Malibu. But we're meeting everyone there and then going to the Lido. Tired of the Lido, too. I've got a better idea. New place? Not exactly. What about the others? That little detail has been attended to. Good. See what I see? Well, jar my pickles. I like this place, Brad. That's fine. I thought you would. You want to dance? No, I've got to have my drink first. But Mr. Brad Chardin's a dance with a mere actress. He would, and he will. You don't mind, do you, dear? Well, of course not, darling. You know, she's very first Hello, Diana. Hello, Donald. Uh, I wouldn't have bothered you for anything in the world, but. I happened to come out here to see some friends off, and I noticed you here, so I thought I'd come over and see if, well, if maybe you weren't doing anything tomorrow night, that maybe we could I'm go sorry, home. Donald, I'm busy. Oh, sure. Well, thanks anyway. You're welcome. Hi, Brad. Hello, Tex, how are you? Hey, what's Pride of Hollywood doing out here? Just uh, slumming. Yeah? Plenty of room in the pew. Why don't you boys join us? <laughs> Thanks very much. That was a lot of fun. Oh, Brad, I hear our premiere is a sellout. Gee, that's wonderful, isn't it? I think so. Hello, Spud. How are you? Hello, Brad. Hey, what are you doing out here? Oh, just a little unofficial business. Diana, this is Spud Johnson. Mr. Johnson? Oh, I've met you over the telephone. Oh, yeah, we've met. Pull up a chair, Spud, and join us. Oh, thanks. Well, how does it feel to be way up there? I don't know. I guess it feels pretty good. Sort of wondered. Didn't hear from you or anything. Well, you know how it is, Spud. You get busy in one thing or another. Yeah. Thought you might be going a little bit high hat or something. Oh, don't make me laugh, Spud. You and me? My... I don't mean me. Well, I don't get you. I mean Joan. Oh, did she fly in with you? No. How is she, Spud? Well, she's... Now, oh, don't get this wrong, Brad. Talking to you about her is strictly my own idea. Your own idea about what? Well, I sort of feel responsible for... Uh, well, you two wouldn't have broken up if it hadn't been for that stunt I started that, uh, well, well, that flight you made with the... If you'd rather talk about this privately, why, it's all right. Don't be silly, Diana. Why don't you snap out of it, Spud? Well, on second thought, Bernhardt, maybe you better leave us alone. Listen, Spud, pipe down, will Brad, you? Brad, please. I'm sorry, Spud, I didn't mean anything. Oh, Forget right. it, will you? Oh. Ah. Shall we dance it? I'd be delighted. Are you sure I'm not taking you away from your plans? Don't be silly. It is getting late. How about dinner with me tomorrow night? Also Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> Don't you think a working girl ought to lead a quieter life? Uh, not when she can go out with me. <laughs> I really had better go in. Well, Joan, do you mind if I tell you I'd rather be with you than anybody I know? Thanks. I had a lovely evening, too. Oh, don't bother to get out. It's only a few steps. Now, Joan, don't get formal again. I'm not. Only I, uh... You what? I must go in. Please, Bill. Tell your dad I'll give the ship another test next week before the race. All right. See you at the field. Good night. Good night. Well, here we are, safe and sound. Home again. Gee, Diana, you're a funny person. What do you mean by that? The more I know you, the less I know you. I never know what you're really like. I'm afraid I'm rather easy to understand, Brad. Gee, this is like that movie scene we played today. Moonlight, automobile, you and me. And you and me. Don't you think the scene ought to end the same way? You're the director this time. That wasn't in the picture. Honey, this is an added scene. I know you're going to like my new leading man. May I introduce him? Mr. Neil 
Bradshaw. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I've walked up and down Hollywood Boulevard a good many times, but this is the first time I've ever walked up to a theater and seen my name in lights. And I don't mind admitting it's a thrill. Thank you. Thank you. say a few words for you. Here she is. Oh, I'm too excited and tired to say very much now. It was a wonderful race, and I'm terribly happy I won. Still, I like her idea for a Trans-Pacific flight. I'm going to back her to beat the Clipper ships. To Manila? A non-stop solo. To the Philippines. You've got to lay the law down to Bradshaw, Dave. I think you're exaggerating it, Harry. Oh. Oh. I am, am I? When he wants to lease a home in Beverly Hills and hire four servants, I don't care. When he buys a Rolls Royce and a Claude, that's none of my business. And when he wants to stay out all night and play tag with the roulette wheels, that's no sand in my shoes. But when he tries to tell me how to direct a picture on the set, then I tell you, you've got to pull him out of it. Oh, it's like that, is it? Plenty. Well, what's the idea of keeping it all a secret until now? Why don't you tell me all this before? Well, you know now, he's gone hog wild. I'm out here to talk to you about it. Oh, my head. Why me, Spud? For the love of Mike, because she won't listen to me. She might listen to you. Well, what's the difference? Why shouldn't she do what she likes? Let her try flying to Manila? To Manila? Well, she hasn't got a chance. She must be out of her mind. That's just what I've been trying to tell you. Why, well, that crazy little fool, what's she know about navigation? She loses, of course, she's out of gas, and there she is. Well, she must be crazy. That's exactly what I told her. That dumb little half pipe. Who does she think she is? I know how to put a squelcher on this. Where is she? Signing the contracts at Old Man Parker's estate on Long Island. Give me long distance. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Is Miss Lawson here yet? I believe she's down in the billiard room, sir. Oh, hello there. Hello. Well, you seem to be having a little difficulty. Here, try this. Now put your right hand underneath. That's right. Now you'll do better. You're a great help. Well, it was the right idea, anyway. Joan, did you ever stop to consider what a nice guy I am? Very frequently. And on the other hand, you realize you're very lovely? You're going to miss that shot. And in the third place, you realize I'm crazy about you. I know, Bill, but... I'd like to see you give up that flight, Joan. We'll get it. But sail to Manila anyhow with me on the yacht. Your yacht sounds good, but your intention, bad. It would be a grand trip, Joan. Just the two of us. 
We could take six months doing it. Go by way of Tahiti. Six months? That's a long time, Bill. No. Not when there's you and me and the boat and the moon and the sea. And the fact that you've got all the glory you want now. You ought to look away from these, these stunts long enough to enjoy life. You make it sound all too interesting, Bill. <coughs> that problem, you said. Well, what is it, Walker? Long distance is calling Miss Lawson. They insist on speaking to her. Well, tell them she's busy. Long distance from where? Uh, Mr. Bradshaw, Los Angeles. Oh, I'd better see what it is. I'll be right back, Bill. All right, Joan. Oh, Walker, you'd better clean this up. Very good, sir. Hello? Hello, Brad. Hello, Joan. How are you? Swell. It's nice to hear your voice again. Listen, you harebrained little half-wit. What's all this hooey about your flying to Manila? Whoever told you you could navigate? Oh, is that what you called up to say? Listen, you're just grandstanding. You... What do you know about ocean flying? You wouldn't get 50 miles offshore before you'd get in trouble. Now, forget it. Are you trying to tell me what to do? No, I'm trying to tell you what you can't do. That's what you think. And now let's make that trip a promise. I'm afraid not, Bill. You're not going to make that flight. I'll make it if it's the last thing I do. Oh, but Joan, you're taking I'm leaving for the coast Wednesday. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. Would you mind passing me the eight ball? What? Oh, where is it? You're right behind it, sir. Have the entire company out for tomorrow morning. We're shooting at 8.30. Check on Bradshaw yourself. All right. Okay, we're rolling. Quiet, please, for sound. Camera? You're making a fuss over nothing. I won't have it. You can't go up and leave me like this. Cut! What's the matter here? I'm trying to make a picture. Don't see who's making that noise. This is going to sound fine, kids. Reduce the low pitch to 13. Excuse me, can you hold that noise for a few moments? What for? We're shooting a movie scene out there, and the hammer goes over our soundtrack. Oh, all right. Hold it a few minutes, Stan. Thanks a minute. I'll be right back, boys. Camera. You're making a fuss about nothing. I won't have it. You can't go away and leave me like this. You're staying here. I'll be back before you have a chance to miss me. Cut! It's a honey. We'll do that air stuff now. Go ahead and relax, kids, and get in the shade. Nice work. Fine work. Doc, where's Smitty? Where's Smitty? I'm making pictures here. Watch your blood pressure. Here he is. Smitty, I want you to show me some fancy flying. Bob, it's really hot. Too bad. Where's my chair, do you know? Right over there, Mr. Bradshaw. Huh? Thanks. How about a cold drink? Coming up. Atta boy. Oh, hello, kittens. Long time no see. Hello, Hi. Brad. Thank you, Mr. Bradshaw. Huh? Yeah, how about you? Mm -hmm. Just been watching you. You like it? You sort of take things easy now, don't you? Easy? For a gentleman who's telling other people they can't fly, your statements don't pack much authority. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'm glad to see you take your own advice and stay on the ground. It's hair, brain, idiocy to fly, isn't it? Hey, now, listen, I... Oh, I know how it is. You can't afford to take chances when you're a picture star. Now, look, you're down the field there, see? And when you're coming up, kid... Oh, no? Take it easy, Smitty. What's the big idea, Brad? You'll find out. You better clear, Smitty. I'll take it up myself. After the stunt stuff, we'll take that next sequence. What's that guy doing? Take a chance like that. Crazy fool. Follow with the camera, Charlie. Maybe we'll get some good stuff. He's doing 
want everything to play the hard with that ship. The crazy nut and all the dough we got sunk in this picture. Look at him. Brad can do anything. Doc, Doc, do something. Stop him. What am I, an angel? Did you get it, Charlie? In the bag. I got stunt men for these things, Doc. Brad, what's the idea? I'm trying to make a picture. Well, do you think your stunt man could do it any better? The next time well, I make a man... Boss, boss, watch your blood pressure. All I'm asking is a little cooperation. And listen, Doc. That gets everything but the oil leak. We're checking that now, Miss Lawson. Okay. Well, did that suit you? Did what suit me? Me, the ship, the flying, I mean. Oh, were you flying? Well, of course I was flying. Now you can go back to your knitting and forget that crazy flight. I can manage my own affairs very nicely, thanks. It's all right with me. I just thought I'd tell you that's all. You can only break your neck once. Thanks for the encouragement. Don't mention it, Kittens. I came a long way to ask you this, Brad. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Stop her. Don't let Joan make that flight. Now look, Spud, she's doing all right without me. She's now reached a point where nobody can even talk to her. Oh, you don't understand. She's doing this not because she wants the glory. You're behind it all. Me? What have I got to do with it? Oh, you put the idea in her head, and now she's out to show you she can do it alone. All right, let her. She's bullheaded and won't listen to reason. I've done everything I can do. I suppose you'd like me to get out on my knees and beg her. Well, you're wrong this time. I won't do it. Hello? Oh, yes, Diane. Sure, sure. Just a couple more scenes. Eight? Okay. Bye. That's another reason I'm out here. Say, listen, you're not falling for that Bernhardt game, are you? Listen, Spud, you can just leave Diana's name out of it. There's certain things I don't like to discuss even with you. Yeah, and I wouldn't either if I were in your place. But, oh, skip it. What are you going to do about Joan? Oh, you're going to bring that up again, are you? Well, I told you, I've done everything I can. Come in. You want on stage five, Mr. Bradshaw? Coming up, Doc. Oh, well, I guess there's nothing more I can say, Brad. I'm sorry. Yes, Fuzzy, so am I. Wait, Mr. Bradshaw. Okay. See you later, Spud. I want to speak to Miss Diana Audrey. Yeah, Diana Audrey. This is the Empire Studios calling. Huh? Well, don't you know where she is? This is very important. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from the studio. They sent me over with a new scenario for Miss Audrey to OK. I'm sorry, Shum, sir. They want Mr. Bradshaw to see it, too. He's not here, either. As a matter of fact, he used to have been a guest here at dinner this evening. But we haven't heard from Miss Audrey nor Mr. Bradshaw since noon. Haven't you any idea where they are? Uh, I, I really don't know, sir. I'll have Miss Audrey call up the studio as soon as she gets home. Oh, Wyndham, is there any message for me? Uh, yes. Uh, she's sent to say she's very busy. Oh, thank you. Oh, so you're waiting for Bernhardt, too. Bernhardt? No, she doesn't live here. I'm waiting for Miss Audrey. And I'm waiting for the guy that's with her. Suppose we wait together. Well, splendid idea. Oh, would you like to sit in my car? Splendid idea. All right. Swell little scooter. Thanks. Glad you like it. <clears throat> Have you ever been in love? Yeah, once. And I'm still paying for it. Ever hear of alimony? Oh, well, you just married the wrong girl. As far as Diana and I are concerned, we're going to... Are you two going to be married? Well, that's where our ideas seem to differ. 
Yeah. That's the way love is. It's all one-sided. You're in love with Diana. Diana's in love with another guy. And the other guy's in love with himself. Yeah, it's very distressing. Yeah, uh, let Let's have a fight. How about it, Boston? Will you give us a break? Let me Take it, Snappy, boys! Holy smoke! Hey, hey, wake mm. up. We must have overslept. It's 5.30. Joe takes off in 20 minutes. Oh, Diana, you'll never know the pain you've caused me. Here, I'll fix that for you. Relax. <laughs> Open your pores. I feel better? Wonderful. Excuse me. Did you gentlemen ring? Oh, yes. Remember me? I'm the guy from the studio. Miss Audrey did not come home. And if she had, I know she wouldn't be home to you, sir. Well, fancy that. Say, do you want to be a pal? Anything you ask, old man. There's a girl going to commit suicide in a few minutes if we don't stop her. Oh? Oh, well, we should do something about it, shouldn't we? Right. Will you drive me to the airport? Gladly. Come on, step on it. Miss Lawson, this is the start of an historic occasion. Hurry up! We've only got three minutes. So good luck and Godspeed. Thanks. Clear the field, Stan. Can't you make this go any faster? Well, I can, but I don't think it's a good idea. I'll phone you from Manila. And I'll be waiting. Goodbye, Mr. Parker. Good luck, my dear. Goodbye, everybody. I'll stop her if I have to carry her off the field. This your way very much. All right, boys, pull the block. What are those? Hey, are you crazy? Three on a match? Ain't things bad enough now? Some people have no consideration for others. Lawson to Catalina, testing. Lawson to Catalina, testing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Are you getting me okay? Thanks, Catalina. Hey, hey, hey. You're too high on the dial. She's got a short wavelength set. I think I got something. And at times like this, you will appreciate the understanding, quiet, helpful aid of the Updike Undertaking Service. You got something, all right. Lawson to Airways, Los Angeles. Lawson to Airways, Los Angeles. Come back, please. Okay, Airways. Six hours out of Los Angeles. Weather getting heavier. Position uncertain. Please give radio bearing. You can't hear me. Okay, Airways. Six hours out of Los Angeles. Weather getting heavier. Position uncertain. Please give radio bearing. Don't mind me, I just dropped in to borrow a cup of sugar. Where did you come from? I've been back there. Just suddenly occurred to me that when you cracked up on this flight, I'd be responsible because it was my idea in the first place. Well, why did you come? Just so you wouldn't come back and haunt me, kittens. All right, 
I'll take over. You'll do nothing of the sort. Well, I better take over. You're miles off your course, aren't you? Uh, haven't you done enough without spoiling this for me? I didn't really think you'd be crazy enough to go. As soon as I get you out of this mess, I won't spoil things for you anymore. You just did it to get publicity. Keep them coming. Yes, sir. Have either one of you gentlemen seen Mr. Bradshaw? If this is another one of your publicity stunts, Mr. Johnson, I'll have you know that I am not in a laughing mood. <laughs> I've never been so humiliated in my life. Taking me to a party and then leaving me all alone. No man can do that to me, not even Mr. Bradshaw. Every day we learn something new, Bernhardt. <laughs> Donald, take me home. I'm very sorry. I'm busy. Oh. <laughs> How about doing? That's the way to treat him, Donnie. Never give a woman an even break. And Joan Lawson is still unreported 21 hours after taking off from Los Angeles on a audacious solo attempt to reach Manila in record-breaking time. Not a word. This thing's got me so far down, I'll never be the same again. I don't want to shave, I don't want to sleep, I don't want to eat, I don't even want to drink. Two double scotches. Yes, sir. Hey, hostess. Hostess. Rise and shine, you big beauty, and bring me some coffee, will you? Getting just a little bit tired. Thank you, service, Mr. Bradshaw. Coffee. Oh, thanks. Take over, will you? All right. How long have I been asleep? About five hours. Five hours? Yep, and you snored through an hour of the dirtiest kind of weather. Oh, what did you come for anyway? It was my idea to start with. Besides, the publicity from all this is going to put me right on top of the heap for good. That's the Bay of San Miguel, only 20 miles from Manila. We have done it. Hey, take over here, will you? Why? Uh, well, I want to get cleaned up. I want to, want to get ready for those cameramen. <laughs> I really believe that's all you care about. Why not? It's dough, and that's what publicity pays off in, pal. You OK there?
world an honor to greet you on, on your in a, in your completion of the greatest solo flight in the history of aviation. Miss Lawson, the world is waiting to hear you. The only thing I want to say is that I didn't do it alone. This is wrong. Neil Bradshaw did all the flying. Let him have the credit. He left the plane in a parachute ten minutes ago. Miss Lawson, you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> There you are. I didn't know you were a family man. I'm a free man. No entangling alliances. Oh, hello. Haven't we met somewhere before? Yes, at the altar. Myrtle. Oh, oh but how could you do what you've done to me? Oh, Myrtle, Myrtle, what are you crying about? Because you owe me $1,600 dollar money. $1,600 dollars? Holy smoke. We could live a long time on that. Oh, Spud, now, wait, darling. Wait a minute. Before we settle this, we've got to discuss terms. Can I wear pleated shirts? Yes, dear. Will you take care of the cat? Yes, dear. Can I sleep in my underwear? Oh, yes, dear. The armistice is on. Let's go. Oh, Spud. <laughs> How am I doing? Swell. Oh, please go away. I can't see anybody now. Kittens? Brad, you're not hurt. No, worse luck. But I have hurt you, and I'm terribly sorry about it. Oh, I guess I'm stuck on you. You're not crazy, are you? Mm-hmm. Not you. 